Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today I'm going to be showing you how to install the charging circuit for the X9 Lite. This will allow you to charge your batteries with never taking them out and via the USB port on the bottom. So the first thing you want to do is obviously you want to flip it over. I highly recommend you keep the gimbal protectors on and so you just don't ruin them here. Now I've been using only this controller for the past while and I think I'm only going to be using this unless I'm going to fly an FPV wing, which I'll use my Horus. But this has just been all around a really great setup, especially with this I'm using D8 and D16 and I'm able to fly my little uh, micros and other things as well. So first step is take out the four screws right here. Once you do that, it just lifts right up. However, when you do that, just be a little bit careful because there's also the battery connection right here, which you'll have to unplug. Now the documentation isn't clear on a lot of things, so I wanna clarify this. And I also found another way to connect a couple things, which make it a lot easier and less time consuming and less prone to error. So the board itself is up here. So this is the board you purchase, and there's already two screws there. So just remove the screws and plug that thing into place. But first I recommend you solder up the wires. Now the wires that you're gonna need soldered up are the five volt ground, uh, 2S and 1S, and they do provide you with the wires here as also. So I've gone ahead and soldered those up. You don't really need that last ground. So yeah, you're gonna be fine in that perspective. So the first thing you wanna go for is the five volt. So the five volt is gonna go all the way down to by the USB because that's where it's going to take its power. So you're supposed to solder it to that capacitor. And what I've done, instead of soldering it to the side of the capacitor, I've soldered it to the top of the capacitor on the side where it should be. So that's something I recommend. It's a lot easier. You don't have to touch the components around it. And uh, if you do this right, you should do a great job. Now, also, if you don't have a, you know, a soldering iron that I'd recommend is this one right here. Uh, this is the one that I use, especially with this flat tip. It really helped a lot and um, this is currently on sale for like 40 something bucks right now so I just saw it last night again it's still on that sale which is pretty crazy because I used to be like 80 bucks or something and it's a must have next thing is we're gonna need ground obviously so the ground is gonna go right here and there's a really nice circle pad right next to the connector there that says ground or GND and just solder it there you're good in that perspective the next thing you need to solder is the 2s line now the 2s line uh, they're saying it needs to be connected to this pin. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. One is take out the board and solder it to the other side, which is not really practical and very time consuming and just annoying. So I've gone, off, I've gone ahead and found another place where you can do that. So there's two places where you can do that. You can do it right on top of this resistor right here. It's really easy. You can consider it like a pad and then just solder it right on top of it. Also, what you can do is take this uh, wire here, the red wire, cut it up and then you'll have obviously two wires left and then just connect it with that yellow one all three wires together but it's not really a clean solution I didn't want to do that but you can do that if you wanted to if it's a lot easier than soldering to this so once that's done then we need to also do the 1s part so the 1s pad here is very important because this will monitor the battery and make sure you know one battery is not 5 volt and the other one's 3 volt because that could be very dangerous it could catch on fire so there is monitoring for the cells which is really great and something you want to see and is a must have what you want to do here is take a wire and then you're gonna have to place it in between the two batteries so but the best way I found to do this is to strip a pretty long piece of wire just about that big right here obviously you want to just twist it up and then I just got myself a screwdriver and a smaller one than this one and then just wrapped it around like this just made a nice little circle here and then pushed it together and just added solder to that to make it into a blob and then I ran it right in the middle right here which I'll show you how I did so let me show you how this sits right now. So if we pop this open, so you can kind of see it right now. It's just sticking right there. It's the same concept, just like this, but with solder to make it pretty stiff. And it's just right in the middle right there. It's enough, you know, it's out enough where I can move it back and forth if I needed to, just to align it perfect. But like this, it's doing really great. And uh, there's two tiny holes like these, which I used a zip tie to hold that wire into place right here. And that's not gonna go anywhere. And that's gonna be, you know, cause you're not gonna be putting this, you're not gonna be taking out the batteries in and out if it's charging. So you're gonna be good in that perspective. And uh, just to put it back is very simple. You put these in, you allow this to stand up. And that's cause I squished it right now. You wanna hold the battery because there's a spring right there. And then you wanna get the other battery and then push it back. And then as you can tell, it's sitting right in the middle and then just squish it. And that's it, that's in the place here. Once that's done, plug everything up and you should be good to go. Now, I'm just gonna show you the notifications here while you're charging. However, the only thing that's kind of annoying is when you plug it in, 
Uh, you see the status right there. I don't understand the status just yet because I haven't used it enough. So I guess it's charging right now. But um, you need to take something into consideration, which is you're not going to be able to see that. So you don't know when it's fully charged. Uh, but you could kind of try to make it out through the backside of the cover here because this is pointing to the back, not the front. And even if you pointed it to the front, this PCB will block the LED and will not allow it to go to the power button. So keep that in mind, have it facing up this way, and then maybe make a hole or something or route uh, another RGB LED out somewhere else to give you an idea of what's going on. That's it, now I have a charging QX7. So it's, it's really cool. And um, obviously with these, once the USB is connected, you can't power them on. So keep that in mind. So, you know, even without this mod, they're just like that. And now you can go ahead and plug in the USB. And as you can tell, they already picked up. Do you want to use it as a joystick or not? And then you, you can do what you want. So everything's working perfect. And this little charging board is a must have, in my opinion. It's not even that expensive. It's like 10 bucks. It might look a little bit difficult, but it just took me like seven minutes to do. And um, it should be smooth sailing. Just take your time doing it. That's all I got to say if you don't have a lot of experience in soldering. And well, that's it guys. I'll have everything linked down below. Go ahead and check them out Also, I have a coupon for this to get like three dollars off or something. It's already on sale, but you even get more Pricing off. It's a must-have I mean I have this around me all the time and it, a lot of people would agree with me and well, that's it guys I really hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out